What is up, guys? Welcome back. Hey, uh, if you're new to the channel, welcome. If uh, you're returning and been here before, welcome back. Uh, on today's episode of What in the Heck Am I Doing? Uh, I bought a new truck. Well, a new to me truck. She's a 2002, but in really good shape. Uh, it is a one owner. 2002 F350 Super Duty 4x4 extended cab V10 gas, uh, one owner with all the service records done at a uh, Ford dealership. Um, but in this video, we're going to talk about what everybody talks about the spark plug situation with the Ford Triton V10. Um, the internet's got me scared about it. Other guys say it's no big deal, just check them and retorque them from time to time. Uh, but what I'm concerned with is on my service history, on the Carfax, I did not see where that dealer addressed any spark plug issues or any mention of it. So that means I got to just figure it out for myself and make sure that we're good to go. She's got 125,000 miles, super clean, really nice truck. And I'd like to keep it that way. And what I don't want to do is be drilling and tapping uh, spark plug holes in the truck. Uh, so if I could avoid that, I'm going to try to just uh get in there and replace the plugs maybe some of the coils i bought new plugs motorcraft plugs uh the gap is available on the internet so uh, they say if you keep them properly torqued and check them every so often you don't have the issue where they loosen up and blow out um and i definitely would like to avoid that with my new pickup truck this is probably the nicest truck i've had in a long time um i did have an o2 super duty crew cab uh that was a 7.3 diesel and it was a great truck i just sold it because life changed that was many many years ago in the early 2000s and crazy enough those trucks are still bringing 25 30 000 bucks with 200 000 miles on it not gonna happen by the time i factor in the initial cost of this truck versus a diesel truck of the same thing it's thousands almost ten thousand dollars difference in initial cost of the truck not to mention maintenance on a v10 is way cheaper than any of the diesel parts or repair. Um, and then, you know, everybody bitches about the gas mileage that a V10 gets. I get it, it sucks, it's not good, it's gonna cost a lot of gas. But it uses 87 octane, not diesel, which is now more than the price of premium gas here in good old California. Uh, so, you know, there's pros and cons to everything. This thing supposedly tows like 12,000 pounds, which is heavier than anything I have. Uh, but if we do get a bigger camp trailer or whatever, got to haul a car or something or bikes, this thing can do it. So it'll work for what I need. I just want to make sure that she's dialed in because I just got it and want to make sure that all the maintenance is up to date. So we've done the air filter and a lot of little things, you know, trying to get it uh, as dialed in as possible before it really starts to get hot here every day for the summer. Um, so in this video, I'm going to kind of show you what I've done to get... To the point that i'm at now which is removing the coil packs um, there is seven millimeter uh, bolts in there on each coil pack that you're going to need to remove not a big deal the back passenger side one big deal that one sucks uh, it's just in a terrible spot so uh, once you get those out pop the coil packs out and from what i read online and other guys on youtube uh, is to leave the truck sitting overnight and spray uh, some PB blaster or some kind of penetrating oil down each spark plug hole on top of the spark plug and let it sit for like 24 hours before you attempt cracking these loose. Mine look pretty clean down in the holes. None of the coil packs look like they were burnt, so I don't think the plugs are going to be backed out at all and, you know, got soot on them or melting of the boot or anything. Uh, so I think I might be okay. And the plugs actually look pretty new, so I, I'm pretty certain they've been changed, but until I pull them out and can really inspect them, you can't really tell. Um, but from looking at the top, they don't look like they're 125,000 mile plugs. We'll find out. Hang in there. Let's see what we can find out. All right. Well, we're going to start here. First off, we're going to remove the uh, intake tube, which there is a band clamp. You just undo there. There is a hose clamp up there. And there is a mass airflow sensor wire that you're going to have to unplug in here. Then take this whole bad boy out, set him to the side. It gives us room to get in here. So if you're not familiar, this is your valve cover. And up there on your intake is where the holes are, where your coil pack sits on top of the plug. These are coil over plug. A little seven millimeter screw sits in there, holds that coil pack on top of that plug. 
Uh, so you're going to remove all five of those from that side and the other five on that side. Then what we're going to do, we're going to spray some penetrating oil, or in my case, some PB Blaster, down these holes on top of that spark plug. Uh, yeah. Okay. So before you remove the coil packs uh, and open the hole to the spark plug, it is best to use an air gun with uh, you know your compressor and blow all around the coil packs and get any dirt and debris that will fly out of there. Even though my motor looks pretty clean, a ton of stuff blew out. So you'll want to blow all that out real good before you take the coil packs out. And then even once I took the coil packs out, I uh, just kind of stuck this guy down in each hole and blaster a whole bunch and more stuff came out. So you want to get all that out before you get to putting that uh, penetrating oil down in that cylinder hole. Uh, that way when you take the spark plug out, only the juice is going down in the cylinder, not the debris. Make sure you do that first. So while I had my coil packs out, I decided to take a look at them. A lot of guys I saw in videos, it was all gummy here and like melted and black sooty where their plugs had come loose at some point and started working their way back out. Um, all of mine seemed to be really good. They were in there really tight. Uh, I am going to put some dielectric grease on them when I put them back in. I bought a new set of aftermarket coils, but I think I'm going to put these factory ones back in. They, they were working fine. I didn't have any misfires. I'm just trying to proactively, uh, you know, avoid any issues, I guess. Uh, so I'm going to put these ones back in and maybe I'll carry a couple of the uh, new aftermarket ones in the truck in my little tool kit for, you know, maybe a roadside repair if I get one that starts acting wonky down the road. Um, but I, I think mine are in pretty good shape and uh, I'm just going to going to run them. They were working fine. All right. So the next thing you're going to want to do is hop up over on the passenger side. Uh, in my case, I removed this PCV hose, which you got to be real careful because them suckers get brittle. Mine's been taped uh, just to kind of help it out, I guess. But you're going to want to remove that guy. He goes to that nipple and he goes to your valve cover. You'll want to unplug him so he's out of the way so that you can get way back there to numero I don't know, five, ten, whatever it is, way back in the back. Um, but same thing on this side. You got your holes in there after you take your things out. And you're going to spray some oil into those holes. Then we're going to let it wait overnight. The next day. All right. We're going to go for it. We're going to just try it on this first easiest one just to see kind of how it goes. Um, I think it uses a 5.8 socket, an extension, and a ratchet. Let's hope for the best. Let's use two extensions because it's pretty far down in there. Okay, so they're kind of at an angle. Oh, okay. So I'm threading real easy, not crazy. So I think we're good there. It wasn't loose because there was a little bit of give okay now there's a lot of penetrating oil because i uh sprayed quite a bit of it down there so it's extra greasy because of that but guys look how clean i don't know if you can see it but look how clean this plug is that plug's not been in there 125,000 miles i wish they had a date on them or something that would like say how long but these plugs have been done before i mean i would put money on that looks good doesn't look all crazy see the top of it was super clean and that's all i could see from the top so i think we might be doing okay here what do you think in the comments i mean i'm replacing these plugs either way they're motorcraft plugs you can see that on there but they're factory motorcraft and uh, so I would say the plugs had been replaced at some point, which is super cool. Um, but I'm going to go ahead and replace them since I'm here anyway. I'm actually going to put a tiny bit of anti-seize on these threads because uh, I anticipate having this truck for a while and I want to set it up for easy repairs for the next guy. The next guy? Me. <laughs> Wish me luck on the next one.
All right, I'm not going to bore you guys with uh, doing each and every one of them. If I come to any issues, I will stop and show you what kind of issues I'm having, if any. If not, I'm just going to get to work on replacing them on this side, which should be the easier of the sides. That one in the back, I'm not looking forward to, but I don't think you need to see each and every one of them. Um, also, what I am doing is putting a little dab of uh, just dielectric grease on uh, on the spring inside the the boot where it attaches to the spark plug on each of them uh, on the coil packs. So I'm going to go ahead and get to working on these and uh, yeah, hopefully everything goes well. Uh, we'll, we'll find out here in a minute. <laughs> All right, guys. I also noticed that under the throttle body, I don't know if you can see that, it looks like there's some moisture, fuel, something kind of sweating out. Maybe that gasket under this uh, throttle body thing. If you've got any experience with that, or you, yeah, I mean, I didn't see online that it was a known leaking area, but I mean, on the other side, even I could see where it's kind of more sweaty looking. I don't know if that's normal or not. Let me know in the comments, man. I'd really like to know. I'm not familiar with these motors at all, but if I need to replace that gasket, I surely will. I'd rather do it sooner than later. Let me know. All right, so I am on the one, two, three, fourth one back. I don't know what cylinder that is, but the fourth one back in this side. Uh, she definitely wasn't as tight as the other ones. The other ones had a bit of a uh to them when I first untorqued it, right? Uh, I don't know why that is. Maybe the PB Blaster worked better on that cylinder. Not sure. All I know is it wasn't loose. Like, I wasn't no way spinning it out. It had a, a little oomph to it, but not like the other ones. So we're going to pull it out and take a look at the threads. Like it unthreads fine. I just, uh, was a little weird. I'm, I'm, I'm probably being extra scary, but it is what it is. I am scared. So, especially when it's the ones that go further back. So we're going to need a magnet to get that guy out. Because it's not coming out at that angle. Let's get a magnet and get him out of there. Hang tight just one second. Okay, let's get a magnet. Here we go. Man, these magnet tools are really handy if you don't have one. I highly suggest picking up one or four. I seem to lose them, so I buy them by the handful. Anytime I'm at a parts store. Okay, let's get this guy out and see what we got going out. Oh, hallelujah. The threads are clean, guys. We got a bunch of uh, PB Blaster on it, obviously, because she was soaked. But if you could take a look there, uh, she looks normal. She looks fine. No metal uh, aluminum in our threads there, which is what I was concerned with. So we're going to keep on keeping on. Woo! All right. So at this point, I've got all five of these bad dogs back in, tightened down, plugged in, ready to rock. And I got to tell you, so far, that ain't bad at all. You know, it's the anxiety, I guess, of, of the threads coming out. But, boy, the relief of pulling those... Uh, plugs out and having no aluminum material on them sure does make me feel good i don't want to knock or talk too soon because we still got that other side to tackle and it's going to be a bear so i consider us about 40 percent done because that side is probably going to be about 60 percent more work <laughs> we'll find out here in a second all right at this point in the juncture we are down to the last one that being Whatever number cylinder that is, way back in the back. So I think the great thing is, is on that side of cylinders, all the spark plugs and boots and everything go in at this angle. This side, of course, they go in at this angle. And that one is so far back. I don't even know. It was a bear to get the, just the coil pack out. Now i got to fight sockets and uh, magnet tools to put the spark plugs back in and take it out. I mean, this one should really be interesting. Let's see. Okay, y'all. That's it. 
that's our final feller back in the back looks like we're good i don't know how the heck i'm gonna put that other one in there and torque it down or whatnot but i'm gonna have to do it a bunch of different extensions dropping them through the back picking them up off the ground Whew. make sure you got you a good strong magnet you're gonna need it all right you guys somehow i was able to get it done uh what i did find out is that removing the three bolts that hold this little guy to the top of your heater core box or whatever you want to call it just three tens on there if you remove that it gives you a lot more access over here the downside now you got three spikes rustling against your arm that kind of sucks but i only dropped sockets and extensions a few times I had to magnet them out got it in got it torqued got the dielectric grease on the boot now we're just going to start putting stuff back the air cleaner this mount the dipstick all the things that i took out and then we'll try to fire it up and see what happens so let's get that done easy on these little tens and sevens don't go crazy torquing on them because them suckers could break that's what we don't need we don't want nothing breaking we just want to do the job and get back out unscathed so we will continue to head on uh we got to put our PCV feller back on here, which plugs into grommet on our valve cover. Then he actually goes under here, which I don't recommend doing that. Uh, and putting him back. Did we take anything else off this side? We're good there. Got all of our coil packs. All right, we're back on to the other side uh, to see about putting that airbox back on. While we're over here, See what I'm saying? It looks kind of like that throttle body thing, neck or whatever, looks kind of moistish down there. Not wet by any means, but let me know in the comments if, if that's normal or if I'm tripping. All right, guys. Well, I think I got it all buttoned back up. Mass airflow, that's in, that's tight. PCV thing's on. Looks like it's the moment we've all been waiting for. Well, I mean, at least I've been waiting for it. I don't know about you, but I'm dirty. I'm sweaty. I'm cut up. Let's see if I forgot anything or if this just works. Here we go. One, two, three. I mean, I'm pretty impressed. I don't hear anything wrong. We'll uh, check for some check engine lights and see if there's anything. Nope, so far so good. I guess we'll uh, wait for it to come up to operating temperature, warm up, see then if any check lights come on. Uh, but so far, feeling like it might be okay. We'll just wait for it to warm up. It's been a couple minutes. It's still uh, still not warmed up, but no check engine lights or any like misfires or anything. So I think we might be okay. Fingers crossed. I hope to be done here. Well fully warmed up I don't hear any weirdness no weird vibrations man this motor idles and runs super smooth for being a big old motor it's wild I, I don't know that I've had a, even a V8 that was that smooth but uh yeah we've warmed up 
feeling good. No check lights. So I think maybe it was a success. I mean, sounds good to me. He didn't have a misfire before, but obviously don't want to cause one either. Well, guys, seems to be working. Still no check lights. She's fully warmed up. And I feel peace of mind that I got some fresh plugs in there. And I know what they're torqued to. And I know what I'm starting off with. So I've done what I could do to try to avoid any kind of issues down the road. Hopefully this video has been helpful to you. Uh, and if, if it was, or if you have any comments, if I've done something wrong, shoot, please let me know. Cause I don't know. I basically researched on the internet and YouTube, and this is what I've come up with right or wrong. I don't know, but that's what I've done. And I'm just hoping to share this experience with you. I figured if I'm going to be doing it, I might as well, uh, you know, record it for other people. Um, so we are at that point in the video where like every other video, we got to do the corny stuff, right? Please share the video, comment, like, subscribe. Let us know in the comments, or did I do it right or did I mess something up? Or is there a better way to do it next time when I go back to check them? Because that's also another thing is we got to check at different intervals uh, to make sure that they're not coming loose. But at this point, I've done what I can and I have that peace of mind that at least I tried. So <laughs> I'm going to try to stay on top of them because I think tightening them and checking the torque uh, won't, won't be too tedious now that I kind of know how to go about it. And... Hopefully this video instills some confidence in you that if a regular dude like me can do it with regular hand tools or Harbor Freight tools or whatever, you can too, man. Don't be afraid. Just take it easy. Hopefully you have a good experience as well. I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> All right, guys. Well, thanks for watching. If you've stuck around this long, I sure do appreciate it. We'll see you next time.